Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, rasulillah. So this is the class number 21 in the explanation of Sayyid Muslim, the authentic collection of Imam Muslim. Uh, we had stopped yesterday at the uh, narration of Ubadah ibn Samit, where he was dying, his, he was on his deathbed, and um, one of his uh, students, as Sunabihi, came to visit him. This is where we stopped. And of course, uh, when he saw uh, that his teacher was dying, Ubadah ibn Samit, the companion, uh, Sunabihi cried. They say he cried because he remembered death or he cried because he's going to miss his teacher. Of course, that makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> so, Badam the Samit, he's the one, yesterday I read this and uh, I was surprised a little bit. I paused a little bit because I thought the student is saying this to Abad ibn Samit, but actually it is correct that Abad ibn Samit is the one saying the following statements. This is how we read it yesterday, but I read it yesterday in that manner, but I was surprised because here uh, we see that somebody who is dying is comforting the, the person who is not dying. He's saying to him, he's saying to uh, his student, why are you crying? He says, For Allahi la la lak. He knows he's dying. And he says, if I'm asked to testify for you that you're a good person, I will testify for you. This showed you, shows you the steadfastness of the righteous people when they're dying. He's actually comforting the person who's not dying. He says to him, I will testify for you if I was to test, if I'm asked to testify for you. Of course, he means يعني, in the akhirah, mm -hmm. uh, because he's already leaving this dunya. And then he says, وَلَإِنْ شُفِعْتُ لَأَشْفَعَنَّ لَكْ And if, I was, if I'm giving the permission for intercession, I will make intercession for you. <laughs> I had to go back and review it because I was really surprised. This is how we read it yesterday. But it sounds strange. So I went and read it in another book, another explanation. I found, yes, this is actually Abad ibn Samit talking to the person who's not dying. He says, and, وَلَإِنْ اسْتَطَعْتُ لَأَنْفَعَنَّكْ And if I'm able to, I would, I would try to help you in any way I can. ثم قال, uh, <clears throat> then he said, every statement I heard from the Prophet وسلم, I have taught you guys, taught, taught the second generation or the other companions or whatever, except one hadith. So this hadith, he says, now that I'm dying, I plan to tell you about this hadith. So why do we think he kept this hadith to the end of his life? Why do you think so? And he, obviously, he deliberately did this. It's not like he forgot the hadith and now remembered it. <laughs> Why do you think he did that? Is hmm. it controversial? The hadith is not controversial itself. The hadith is an authentic hadith. In what way? What, what, how is it controversial? I don't know. Why would he keep it for the last minute? <laughs> 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 the last moment. Uh -huh. People expect that you are not going to tell anything wrong. That is correct. That is correct. But also the Sahaba are known never to utter a single word about the Prophet Sallallahu even when they're not dying, except that they know it's truth, because they know the hadith, من, uh, من من whoever lies or attributes any lie to me, he should prepare his seat in the fire of hell. He's preparing his seat for himself in the fire of hell. Let me read the hadith, because you were not here yesterday, what the statement of the hadith, then maybe you can conclude why he left it till the end. The hadith says that Whoever testifies, whoever, uh, whoever says and testifies that there's none worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his slave and messenger and that Isa, Jesus, is his slave and the son of his slave uh, girl or woman, which is the mother of Isa, Mary. وَكَلِمَتُهُ And the word of Allah he has, uh, that he sent down to Mary. وَرُوحٌ مِنْهُ And a soul that is created by Allah, uh, a privileged soul that is created by Allah. وَأَنَّ النَّارِ أَجَنَّةَ حَقٌّ وَالنَّارَ حَقٌّ And the fire of hell is truth or is um, certain. And Jannah is also certain. Jannah, if he said Jannah first. The heaven is certain and the fire is certain. Whoever says that, Allah will admit him to paradise or to Jannah or will protect him from the fire of hell. 
So why did he leave it to the very end? I'll tell you why. First of all, uh, they say that such a hadith, some of the Sahaba had a tendency to keep them and not make them public knowledge because they were afraid that some of the people who listen to these hadith will stop doing good deeds, relying on that, oh, I say the shahada, and I believe in the Jannah, I believe in the Akhirah, I will go to Jannah, let me do whatever I want to do. <laughs> this, is, this is actually, and, and this, we'll see that very clearly in some other hadith to come, that uh, there's a hadith of Abu Hurairah that's very famous, that the Prophet ﷺ said the similar statement to Abu Hurairah, and he gave him his shoes, he gave him, the Prophet ﷺ gave him the shoes, his own shoes, and he says, take my shoes and go and tell the people, and if they, uh, to make sure that they, they know this statement is not from Abu Hurairah, from the Prophet Sallallahu he gave him the shoes like, this is like the stamp to show that this is actually from the Prophet. And as he was going to tell the people, you know what happened to him, right? Yeah. <laughs> Umar Khattab met him and he says, what are you doing with the shoes of the Prophet? <laughs> <laughs> But well, he says, I, I'm going to tell the people the hadith. <laughs> Subhanallah, you'll see the hadith is coming yet. So Umar al-Khattab yani, was afraid. He was afraid that the people will rely on such a hadith and, and not avoid prohibitions and not do the good deeds. So he didn't just tell him, go back. He actually hit him on his chest. <laughs> he says, he hit him on his chest so hard. He says, فَخَرَرْتُ لِأَسْتِي he said, I fell back on my bum. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he was shocked, of course, and hurt. So he actually says, I started crying. And I ran back crying to Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> This hadith will come. But anyhow, so when, 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 when Prophet Sallallahu questioned Omar why he did that, Omar Khattab said to him, you know, uh, he said, did you actually say this to, to Abu Hurairah? He says, yes, I said that to him. And then Umar al-Khattab says, uh, don't, don't tell the people. Uh, this is a very important glad tiding for the people, of course. But he says, don't tell the people. Uh, otherwise, they will rely on it and leave the good deeds and be lax about avoiding prohibitions, you know. And the Prophet Sallallahu actually uh, said, Isn't yet take it? okay, don't, don't tell them. So it was a jihad from the Prophet Sallallahu and then, and you'll see that um, Umar ibn Samad did the same thing. He just, in some hadith, فَأَخْبَرَ عِنْدَ مَوْتِهِ تَأَثُّمًا Some of the Sahaba um, uttered those hadith to the following generation before their death, afraid that they would be held accountable for withholding important knowledge. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even scholars say that we should follow this hadith, we should follow this, this method of teaching not to um, uh, propagate such a hadith to people we know are lax about their deen. You don't tell these a hadith to somebody you know is neglecting the prayer, committing uh, adultery or stealing or drinking alcohol and doing riba, and you tell him a hadith like this. It is haq, we know it's haq, uh, but he will misuse it. There's many things that could be haq, Actually, the Quran itself, Allah says, يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِ بِهِ كَثِيرًا The Quran itself, يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا Many will go astray by the Quran itself because they will misunderstand it and misapply it. وَيَهْدِ بِهِ كَثِيرًا uh, In another ayah, وَلَا يَزِيدَنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ مَا أُنزِلْ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ تُغْيَانًا وَكُفْرًا مِشْ إِمَانًا وَعِبَادًا تُغْيَانًا <تصفيق> They, they reject it and disbelieve it and go against it. So because of, uh, because of this, they actually may, uh, because of this action of theirs, they may actually go astray more and more. You follow? Uh, so, so here, uh, so they say any hadith that is, um, just like you said, it's controversial, not that it's not authentic or not haq, it is truth and certain. But uh, it depends on who's receiving this hadith. So he felt that he has to say it before he dies, otherwise he would be held accountable for not telling the people everything. And that, was, that is uh, well known that Sahaba used to do that sometimes. Even the Prophet ﷺ, he took Omar's advice on this matter and he felt that it was, it was a better way. Uh, but it's a good glad tiding for those, of course, who are applying their deen, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
will treat all the Muslims in such a beautiful way and such a merciful way, yani you should feel comfortable uh, that inshallah ta'ala, if you are uh, somebody who is serious about their deen, that you, are, you will be very safe inshallah ta'ala after you die. And Ubal ibn Samit is saying this very confidently, and he's very steadfast and confident and tranquil, <coughs> no fear, yani, as he is dying, he's saying that. Now, <clears throat> in, in the other narration says, Ala ma kana min al-amal. Yesterday I said, Ala ma kana min al-amal, because one of the narrations says that he will be admitted to Jannah. Ala ma kana min al-amal. This statement according, or ala ma kana min could be understood as regardless of his deeds, could be understood that. Or according, to his or her deeds, we follow? So, regardless of the deeds, this is actually the explanation of Imam Al-Qurtubi, Imam Ibn Hajar, which means that they will enter Jannah regardless of if their deeds are good or their deeds are bad. This shows that um, uh, maybe Allah will forgive even if the deeds are bad. Or maybe they will get punished in the fire of hell and before they, um, before they complete the period of punishment that they were deserving, they will be pardoned and still they will be admitted to Jannah regardless of their deeds because their deeds have not been accounted, have not been reckoned for. You follow? They still had evil deeds that they never got punished for and they're still getting admitted to Jannah. Mm -hmm. They might be uh, also deserving of fi uh, fire of hell and being taken and they receive intercession from the Prophet Sallallahu from believers, from somebody righteous they knew, or somebody righteous, their father or their brother or somebody, their wife, anybody. This good one, this, their wife. So to have a good wife, that's good. <laughs> do, you think, do you think they'll make intercession for us? <laughs> so anyhow. Well, normally, alhamdulillah, yani, but women are normally more righteous than men. Uh, that's what I see, yani. <laughs> at least in my, in my life. <laughs> because the, the, they're not exposed like we are exposed to so much fitan, yani. They're usually in their homes and with their children, but we see so many other things. May Allah save us. <laughs> so be nice to them so they can make intercession for you, okay? <laughs> so, so maybe, yes, he's being taken, there's some narrations that people are, why they're being taken to the fire of hell, intercession, uh, uh, they, they receive some intercession from some of those people who are qualified for intercession according to the permission of Allah. And they are taken back for after, as they're going to hell, they're taken back and into, so this applies to, uh, to all believers. <clears throat> or according to their deeds means that they can be punished or not punished depending on what Allah chooses for them. But then when they enter Jannah, they will assume their place in Jannah based on their deeds. So regardless of their deeds or according to their deeds, okay? Could mean this or mean that. Finally, I'll mention one more thing. وَرُوحٌ مِنْهُ I said وَرُوحٌ مِنْهُ a spirit from Allah. Minhu from Allah means by the from the creation of Allah. Does not mean that Isa is a part of the Ruh of Allah. Does not mean that at all. Okay. Um, first of all, nobody ever claimed that Allah has a Ruh. A Ruh is a spirit. Uh, there's nothing in the Quran or Sunnah to say that Allah has a spirit. Okay. So you can't say that Allah took part of His spirit and gave it to Isa. This is number one. Number two. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, for instance, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مِنْهُ So, مِنْهُ, Allah says that I have made the heavens and the earth submissive or sub subjective to you or for your benefit. And He says also مِنْهُ, مِنْهُ, from Him. And we know that these are creation of Allah. The heavens and the earth are creation of Allah. And they are مِنْهُ, يعني من خلقه أو من عنده. Okay, that means they are from Allah, from His creation. Not that they are part of Allah, and the same here, Ruhul Minhu. And we say that this is the same thing that was mentioned for Adam alayhi salam. He didn't say min Ruhul Minhu, he says min Ruhi. min Ruhi. Yani he even attributed the Ruh that is blown into Adam to Allah directly. You follow? Uh, so uh, I, I blew in him my spirit. So does, does this mean that? Adam get the full, full spirit of Allah and Isa gets part of the spirit of Allah. This is wrong and this is wrong. It just means it is a spirit of and life that was blown 
into Adam, that is blown into Isa, and it is from the creation of Allah. Okay, so these kind of statements we have to be very careful for because some people miss, may misunderstand them. Ruhun minhu could also mean Rasul minhu, by the way. Ruh could mean messenger. And this is how it is used in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament and New Testament, that Ruh and messenger, spirit or messenger are interchangeable. It is the spirit from God to test the spirit. They said there's a statement or a, there's a verse in, 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 in the Bible that says how to test a spirit. Is it from God or not? Here that means a messenger. Is he a messenger from God or not a messenger from God? Ruh minhu could also mean rahmat minhu. It has multiple meanings. Just wanted to mention that to you. Uh, we have finished uh, this hadith of Abad ibn Samit and we did not start the following. Inshallah, we'll leave it in some other time. Now. They will be. So we should have four so the chances will go higher. Uh, exactly. It increases our chances. <laughs> 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 <laughs>